All right, good morning, everybody. Let's do a quick sound check, make sure we are good to go. And we got the markets here reacting to the jobless claims and the PPI. So quick look at the futures. You got the NQ popping about uh, a quarter of a percent. S&P futures are flat. The RUT is up about a quarter and the YM is flat. So for now, it's a bit of a, a non-event. All things being considered. And then on the QQQ here, the, uh, the cash QQQ, don't see this too often. Out of the 10 time frames that I watch, the weekly, the three-day, down to the five-minute, nine of them have a squeeze. Three-day squeeze, two-day squeeze, a daily, a four-hour, a two-hour, a one-hour, a 30, a 15, and the five. It's a crap load of built-up energy. Now, jumping back to the, uh, the NQ here, I still think very much a spot for patience. And if anything, guys, I got this box here. Let me mark up the box. So as far as swing trades go, I think trying to swing trade it inside the box could be a little difficult and could be a little bit frustrating. If they can clear the 21 EMA, and I really think the spot here is 18,400. If they can get it and keep it back above that 18.4, stabilize it, cancel out the lower time frame sell signals, bring on some fresh buy signals, that should put things in better standing for a push higher. Below that daily 50, I think it becomes an easier short. Trying to call for the longer the short inside the box. I happen to think it'd be a tough game. So to the extent we're in that box, below that 18,400 and above that daily 50, I want to take a bit more of a day trade approach. 15-minute, 30-minute hourly squeezes. Now, frankly, that might not uh, that might not be easy that uh, either. We're popping, we're dropping, we're flipping, we're ripping. A lot of volatility here in the box. But I do think for a swing trade, don't be the uh, you know, don't have that temptation to be the first guy or girl to get long, to get short. Wait for a good break of the box. One or two closes back under the 50. Then I think you're looking for a swing short. One or two closes back above that 18,400. Then I think you can look for a swing long. In the uh, the 18,400. If you check out the four hour squeeze here, it's not a good looking four hour squeeze. 21 EMA under the 50, 21 EMA crossing under the 200 SMA. Structure label is bearish. We got a sell signal. We got a negative eight on the big three score. They can try to cancel all that out above that 18,400. If they can't do that, you got to respect that four-hour squeeze. They can definitely pack a bit of a punch. So there's your levels for the NQ. And then on the S&Ps here, the cash S&Ps, SPX. I think it's all about that 21 EMA. Below it, right? one or two closes below it. In most situations, it'd be an easier short. We got a brand new daily squeeze. I have a break of momentum. One or two closes back above that mean. Then I think it becomes an easier long. So frankly, I think it's going to be uh, a few days of patience here. Don't got to be the first one to get long. Don't got to be the first one to get short. When I finally get long or short, I'm okay with being a little bit late to the party. I'll be a bit late to the party. But at that point, I'm showing up with a bit more conviction. And then let's go check out the four-hour squeeze here. I wouldn't call it a perfect short or a perfect long, but it's a little bit rough around the edges. Under the 21, under the 50, under the ATR trailing stop. But we got a negative one. Negative one on the big three score. Not uh, not too much clarity there. 
So there's the indices. Let's go take a quick look at the uh, the RUT, the IWM futures. And as far as the indices go, I think the small caps are in the uh, the worst shape right now. They've got a negative one on the daily. So that's the first index to have a negative big three score on the daily chart. Under the 50, under the 21, under the trailing stop, and a little momentum break. So there's the indices, and then I want to show you guys the uh, the leaderboard here. All right. So on this spreadsheet, I've got the big three scores for the monthly, the weekly, the three-day, the two-day, the daily, all the way down to the 15. We take the score from each of those time frames. The best possible score for the Bulls, 120. Best possible score for the Bear Skis, negative 120. So at the top of the leaderboard, you've got Chipotle. And then a lot of energy stocks, right? EOG, COP, ExxonMobil, Oxy, Fang, XLE, Chevron. As far as big tech stocks, Amazon's in good standing. They got a 110 out of 120. Google's got a 108. Meta's got a 101. The tough thing about it, S&P's in QQQ. They're all the way down here. At the close yesterday, SPX gets a 17 out of 120. QQQ gets a 14 out of 120. So just like we talked about yesterday morning, there's going to be some good-looking setups out there. The good-looking setups don't work. Let me reword that. They don't work like they should. If the S&P is the QQQ, aren't giving you that wind at your back. Best-case scenario, I've got Amazon. And Amazon's cranking out a 110. Right? Really, really good. If I want to buy that Amazon with conviction, I want the S&Ps and the QQQ to have a similar score. Amazon's at 110. The S&P's got 100 plus. The QQQ's got 100 plus. Now I can get busy here on Amazon. The S&Ps and the QQQ being all the way down here just tells me, if anything, I'm not going to have too much wind at my back. And that can make being long Amazon or being long Google kind of a tough situation. And then towards the bottom here, let's go check out the stinkers. Um, Nike, negative 110. Starbucks, a negative 100. Boeing, a negative 93. And I love to see that. Apple. Apple gets a negative 84. Tesla gets a negative 74. So as far as Apple goes, um, they did fire that daily squeeze short yesterday. And being that Apple is such a big, heavily weighted stock, that can put a little pressure on the market. And then Tesla here, Tesla, like everything else, they got earnings coming up here in a few weeks. And I think it's going to be a big earnings announcement. If you take a look here at the monthly squeeze, it's not in great shape. If earnings are bad and we get a big gap down here in Tesla, that's going to put that monthly squeeze one step closer to firing short. And you all know the rule of thumb when the squeeze fires short. That can trigger a push into about two and a half to three ATR. Minus three ATR is all the way down here at 70 bucks. Which, of course, that sounds like a stretch. Like, can Tesla really go down another $100? Well... If you take into consideration that inside of the squeeze, we've gone from 300 to 170. Yeah, if the if the squeeze actually fires short, Tesla's gearing up for a much bigger move lower. Trades under the trailing stop, trades under the 21, under the 50. 21 crosses below the 50, and we got no momentum to be found. So I happen to think earnings for Tesla is going to be uh, a bit of a big one. Should decide its short-term fate here sometime soon. 
So there's Tesla, and then for the energy stocks, right? They're at the uh, the top of the board. The only thing I don't like about energy, I'm not getting a pullback to buy it. So it's a bit of a runaway train here. The reason I would love a pullback to buy it, the monthly squeeze. Hang tight here. My charts are freezing. All right, there we go. I would love a pullback here. If anything, just down to the daily 21 EMA to find a spot to buy some calls for this monthly squeeze. It's a really, really good looking chart. Squeeze, fresh momentum. It's above that trailing stop. Structure is bullish. The squeeze is bullish. We got the big three buy signal and we got a 10 out of 12. When that monthly squeeze fires, that should open the door for a push into about 105. So what I would love to see here, and we'll see if the market cares, but what I would love to see, one more pullback, maybe down to that trailing stop, maybe down to that 21 EMA, one more pullback, find some support. At that point, I'm gonna jump in, You know, probably go four, five, six months out to expiration, and then buy those out the money calls up here near that monthly squeeze target. You could buy the 100 calls, you could buy the 102.50s, you could buy the 105s. But I think a really, really good looking monthly chart. If you look at a few of the uh, the energy names like ExxonMobil, that's a good looking monthly squeeze. That calls for about 135. You've got Chevron. Not bad. I wouldn't say as good as uh, as XLE and Exxon. But if they fire that monthly squeeze in XLE, Chevron's probably going to go higher. So that monthly squeeze calls for a push into the recent highs, right around that 190. You've got EOG. That one's perfect. Yeah, that's a that's a good looking monthly. If that fires, that calls for a push into about 140-ish. And then there is Oxy. Not too shabby either. If they can keep it above that monthly 200, and then XLE takes off, this would call for a push towards, we'll call it 80 bucks. So again, being that energy for now, kind of dominates the top of the leaderboard. If I'm looking for a squeeze trade, if I'm looking for a, a buy the dip opportunity, that should be one of the first spots we focus. All right? Not an Apple, not a Tesla. And frankly, for now, not even the S&Ps or the QQQ. Energy's got it going on. And then for a few short ideas here, um, you know, the, the perfect short, as far as visually, something like a Starbucks. Now, granted, I think you're a little bit late to the party here. So I wouldn't call it a fresh idea. But visually, for a good short, I want to find something that looks just like that. Big daily squeeze. 21 under the 50. 50 under the 200. Big three cell signal, broken structure. All right. That worked as advertised. You short that near the 21. You catch that flush down to minus three. You take your paycheck and you keep it moving. So a couple things here along the same lines. Um, T-Mobile. Pretty similar. 21 under the 50. It trades under the trailing stop, negative six on the big three score, broken structure, and a sell signal. Now, here's the thing. If QQQ and S&P is just, you know, they go on an epic short squeeze, and then sometime next week, they're taking out the highs, I don't think you want to be short anything. So going back to the QQQ real quick, before I can take a fresh short, my preference is we're getting the QQQ closing one or two candles below that 50. 
If they do that in the QQQ, then I think everything across the board should see a bigger flush. So before I can short a T-Mobile or a Workday, a Dollar Tree, a Pinterest, I got to get the thumbs up here from the QQQ first. But you got T-Mobile. Um, and then ARC. Good old Auntie Kathy. I got to get the thumbs up from the QQQ first. But if the Qs can break, then I think ARC is setting up for a pretty good short. If anything, for a flush down towards that daily 200. Squeeze. Broken structure. Sell signal. Negative six. At the moment, it's an A-plus short. And then you've got Home Depot. I think I like ARC a little bit better. Reason being, ARC's a little closer to its 21 EMA. And we've got that benefit of a daily squeeze. But as far as the structure here for Home Depot, it's, uh, it's pretty busted. 21 EMA crosses under the 50. We got a negative shift of the trailing stop. Got ourselves a fresh sell signal. I think on any bounce here, that doesn't take price back above that 21 EMA. I would look to short it. Short the bounce from move down to about 330. But realistically, at the, uh, the end of the day, I think we can simplify our job by just trying to find a short in the QQQ or the SPX. If we get the thumbs up for a short in the indices, I think that makes our jobs that much easier. If I can short the S&Ps, I'm kind of covering all my bases. If Home Depot falls apart, if T-Mobile falls apart, if ARC falls apart, if, uh, if Pinterest craps the bed, there's a very good chance they're crapping the bed because the S&Ps and the QQQ broke lower. You short the index, I think it's easier. And again, you kind of cover all your bases. But for now, guys, I got no bias. I'm going to be a patient fella. And I'm going to wait for a move here out of the box. If we're in the box, I can day trade it. Back above that 18,400. I'm looking for a long. Below that daily 50, I'm looking for a short. I think best case scenario inside that box. You try to go to bed in cash. All right. Day trade it, wine it and dine it, take it to Chili's, and then before the day's over, you drop it back off at the bus stop. Got to get a little bit more clarity here before I'm taking a fresh uh, swing trade. All righty. So any questions, anything y'all want to take a look at, let me know here in the chat, and I've got you covered. Shall not be a dull day. Shall not be dull. Let's go see that four-hour squeeze here. Yeah, she's a, she's a finicky one. They're doing a good job of holding support. And, and frankly, they're holding it where they should. Right. They're fighting the good fight where they should. Daily 50. Problem is, if they can't cancel out that four-hour sell signal, you got to keep an eye on that four-hour squeeze. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough read right here. Day trade it. I think the answer for now is you day trade it. Um, and NVIDIA short. Good morning, Paul. How are you? So for an NVIDIA short, got to get the thumbs up from the QQQ first. And you can imagine, right? If, uh, if next week the QQQ is breaking out above 450, we're boogieing towards a brand new all-time high. What are the odds that NVIDIA can break lower? I wouldn't think that high. If the QQQ can take out the daily 50, and then we get a big dump, 
then I think NVIDIA is a much easier short. And if anything, if you're short in NVIDIA, I'd imagine that daily 50 would be one level for an initial bounce. Doesn't mean they hold it there, but I think the easy short, if we can get the thumbs up from the QQQ, would be the move down to that rising daily 50. You know, which of course would be a good short. It's about 50, 60 bucks a downside. Now this morning, NVIDIA is going to gap up to about 876, which puts it right under that 21 EMA. But I don't think it'll be so much an NVIDIA thing. I think it'll be much more of a, a QQQ SPX thing. Whether the next good trade on NVIDIA is a long or a short. QQQ first, and then the big bad NVIDIA. Good morning, Maddie. When I day trade, what time frame do I focus on? My preference is the 15-minute chart and up. 15-minute squeeze, a 30-minute squeeze, a one-hour squeeze. The, uh, the lower the time frame, the quicker the move. So if I take uh, a 5-minute or a 15-minute squeeze, Typically, I'm going to be right or wrong a lot quicker than if I'm taking a one-hour or a two-hour squeeze. And then the other thing to consider is, with a lot of indicators, mine included, the lower the time frame, the more room there is for noise. A squeeze and a sell signal on a, a one-hour time frame tends to stick a little bit better than a squeeze and a sell signal on a two minute or a five minute. Now, regardless of the time frame, I think the real key with day trades is whatever time frame you're going to trade, you want that time frame to be in alignment with your bigger time frames. So let me find a good example. Um, maybe microchip. A good example. So let me try to find a better one maybe amazon yeah perfect so you know for example say this morning amazon gets a, a five minute squeeze and a five minute sell signal before i can jump in and short that five minute i've got to check out my bigger time frames and what i don't want to do is get short on the five minute if the five minute signals are going counter trend to the bigger time frame signals. For Amazon here, that'd be the case. All right, I get a five minute squeeze, I got a five minute sell signal, but then I check my 15 minute. I check the two hour, I check the four hour, I check the daily, the weekly, and they've all got a buy signal. That would imply the move lower on the five minute might be a little tough. The five minute sell signal is not in perfect alignment with my bigger time frames. Best case scenario, if I've got a weekly, daily, four hour, two hour, 15 minute buy signal, I want to buy my five minute squeeze. I want those five minute signals on the same page as my bigger time frames. Now, a name like, uh, like a Starbucks. That'd be much more ideal. Starbucks gets a five minute squeeze, five minute sell signal. I check my bigger time frames. They're all on the same page. One hour sell signal, two hour, four hour, daily, weekly. At that point in time, if I take that five minute squeeze for a short, I'm not fighting the bigger picture trend. I'm not fighting those bigger time frame signals. So whether it be a five minute, a 15 minute, a 30 minute, a one hour, you don't want to fall too much in love with that one time frame. You want to take that trade on that one time frame in alignment with the bigger picture. If that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Um, Green Eggs and Ham. Great username. 
yeah, so for the energy idea, and again, I kind of want that pullback. And granted, energy has been a total beast. So, you know, waiting for a pullback here uh, might not be. Uh, well, I might not get it. But we're kind of hanging out up here at that daily 3 ATR. Um, the daily squeeze fired all the way back here in February. So in the event we get a bit of a pullback. And then I can jump in for a trade based on that monthly squeeze. I I'm a fan of giving it more time than needed. So one thing you can do is look at it from uh, an average true range perspective. Right now, the monthly ATR is about... We'll call it $8. Meaning on the monthly chart, an average move here for energy is about 8 bucks higher or lower. So from that perspective, yeah, we, we could get to 100, 105-ish in, in one more monthly candle. What I would do in that case, I would triple the time needed. If I think we can get there in one month, I'm probably going to give that a trade anywhere from three to four months to expiration. Will my percentage return be as big um, if I catch that move quickly? In comparison to buying calls that expire in 30 days? No, of course not. But I can take a bit more of a bigger position size. I can comfortably sit through some chop. I can comfortably sit through a bit of a pullback. Not worried so much about that premium decay. And if I'm doing that with an out the money call, you know, say we're buying the 105 call, whether I catch that push in four weeks or eight weeks or 16 weeks, if I'm buying a 105 call and energy is at 95 bucks, I'm going to get a really good bang for my buck. Right? It's still going to be a really nice trade. So I'm a fan of giving that a little bit more time than needed. Great question. Yeah, Scott, it's been a, been a jam-packed week here on the economic calendar. I think we got a little bit more coming later today. Let's go take a look here. All right. Yesterday was a CPI report. And then the Fed minutes for March. Today, we have the jobless claims and the PPI report, and we got a few more Fed speakers, and then tomorrow, 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 we've got, believe it or not, a few more Fed speakers. No, and, and that can make things tricky as well. And I think that all kind of ties into the, the need to be patient right now for our swing trades. No, we're, not, uh, we're not below my level to get short. We're not above my level to get long. And then even though I think it's an easier situation to day trade, when you're in a bigger box, you know, even, even day trading can be tough when we're getting all these sound bites. Right? Jobless claims come out yesterday. The, uh, the CPI comes out. And boom, down we go. Then, you know, 2 o'clock rolls around. We're getting some Fed speakers, and the market just pops. You know, so the alternative is just saying, hey, if we're in this box, I'm going to do nothing. I'm not going to get long. I'm not going to get short. I'm not going to day trade it. I'm not going to get caught up in all that noise. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to protect my cash. I'm going to protect my peace of mind. And then when the day comes where they're ripping it through 18400 or they're dumping it below that daily 50, then I can look for my spot to get longer or short. If you look at it on a, even a five-minute time frame, if uh, if you can trade that kind of price action, then kudos to you. I know where I excel, 
and I also know where I suck, right? I, I kind of suck when we're getting price action like this. Oh, we're popping. Here comes the bulls. Nope. Wait a minute. Now we're pulling back. And then we're popping and we're dropping. It's a, it's a total, total chop fest. And every now and then you get a nice continued push. And every now and then you get a nice continued flush. But as far as clarity, at least for me, just speaking personally, it's not a spot where I've got a lot of clarity. If I'm going to take a shot at a long or a short, I've got to keep it as a day trade. Until we can get that bigger move out of this range. You know, and, and sometimes, guys, that's the best thing you can do for yourself as a trader. We all like to wake up and say, hey, the uh, the market's going higher. The market's going lower. I, I've got conviction. I've got clarity. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just step back, throw your hands in the air and say, I've got no freaking clue. I don't know if we're going lower. I don't know if we're going higher. And the last thing you want to do is lose your shirt in that box. And then we get the bigger break either which way. And you're still kind of sitting there licking your wounds. Right? You got tossed around in the box. And now we're getting that clear break for a short. You know, at that point, you might not be too quick to want to get short. We get a bigger break for a long. Yeah, at that point, you might not want to jump in and get long. In the moment, it'll feel like you got to wait forever. In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't take too long. Let them chop it. Try to get a bit more clarity. So it's very, very tough price action. Even for a day trade. If it's, if it's tough for a day trade, if we can't get uh, good clarity for day trades, that makes our swing trading that much more difficult. You short the perfect short setup yesterday. Now we're popping a bit. You buy the perfect long setup yesterday. And now we're dropping a bit. A lot of frustration. Whole lot of frustration. So for those of you in my mastery, um, we'll be live today at, uh, at 10.30 Central. The, uh, the game plan is patience. The game plan is patience. What I don't want to bet on is another trade like Google. The Google trade we had, which worked out really well, that's, uh, it's a bit of an exception to the rule. We bought Google on that flush. We caught a nice push towards our target. Google did that with no market behind it. Off goes Google. And then the S&P is the QQQ. They're, uh, they're a glorified chop fest. I'm glad it worked out for us on Google. But I don't want to keep on placing that bet. No, that, that we picked the one stock that can break out and trend higher while the market's going through a bit of an identity crisis. If anything, it'd be a bit more like Netflix. All right, here comes Netflix. Big squeeze are going for a breakout. And then they drag it right back down. All right, I'm going to short Netflix now. And then they pop it 10 bucks into the close. Tricky, tricky stuff. Tricky, tricky stuff. Yeah, yeah, Claude, for sure. Or um, Chuck, I'm sorry, Claude. Where's Claude coming from? Yeah, for, for sure, Chuck. And that can be the case in, the, in a sound bite market. Jobless claims, PPI, CPI, Fed speakers up the wazoo. It's, uh, uh, again, the word would be clarity. And I think the other thing making swing trading a little bit difficult you know, January, February, March, um, November, December. For a while there, the game was really easy, right? 
I'm going to wake up. I'm going to blindfold myself. I'm going to buy some calls. I'm going to go to the beach for a few hours. And when I come back home, I'm probably making money. What we've all got to keep in mind, swing trading is never easier than when the S&Ps and the QQQ have just fired a weekly squeeze. Like talking about that wind at our back, that's the ultimate wind at our back. The weekly squeeze is over. And frankly, the weekly squeeze ended back in February. If you've noticed a big difference in your swing trade results from February-ish up to this point, I think that's one of the primary reasons. We're not trending higher every single week. All right, take it a step further. We had the ultimate source of wind at our back from that monthly squeeze in the S&Ps. All right, that one, two, three, four, five month period from November to March, it'll never get better than that. Big compression, big buildup of energy. And then they're taking the thing from 4,200 to 5,200. Now we're at the point where in most situations, that monthly squeeze is over. And it did its job perfectly. Fired at the 21 EMA. Takes price directly into that 3 ATR target. So we all got to keep those two things in mind. The monthly squeeze, the weekly squeeze, they're, they're pretty much over. We don't have that huge, uh, that huge supply of momentum. And then to make matters a little bit worse, we're trapped in a, in a giant squeeze setup here. With no real clear sense of, are we taking it long? Are we taking it short? Now, the only good thing I can tell you, with nine squeezes setting up on the QQQ, we might not have to wait too long for the next big directional move. All right. When the four-hour squeeze fires, and then the daily squeeze fires, and then the two-day, and then the three-day, whether that be high or low, long or short, that's going to be our next source of momentum and direction. At the moment, trying to call for a big pushback towards the highs or trying to call for a pullback to the weekly 21, that's the, that's the tough part. That is the tough part. So I think patience will pay. When that weekly squeeze fires, when that monthly squeeze fires, you know, we're all thinking very much um, profit. How much money can I make? Where can I make money? Now I think we're very much at a point where we got to have that mental shift from, you know, profits, profits, profits to profit preservation. If you made some good cash on the way up, your job right now is not to keep on trying to make more. Your only job really should be protecting those profits. And then until we get more clarity, until we can break out of this big box, Put your peace of mind over profits. I don't got to buy it today. I don't got to short it today. And hey, I, I accept the fact that might be the case for another couple of weeks here. But when I get the clarity, then my job of making more profits gets that much easier. That much easier. All right, guys, make sure I don't miss any questions here, and then I'll let you go. And mastery, folks, I will see you. I will see you at 10.30. Um, is Tesla a stinker? Yeah, as far as the leaderboard goes, Tesla kind of reeks. <laughs> Negative 74 out of a 120. So I'm not the greatest. And, and like I said, I think the whole thing with Tesla here, what happens after earnings? What happens after earnings in relation to this big monthly squeeze? 
we got to view that monthly squeeze the same way we'd view any other time frame. Could be a five minute chart, could be a four hour chart or a monthly chart. When a squeeze fires long or short, they can take that from about two and a half to three average true range moves from that 21 EMA. So if earnings are spectacular and they're getting Tesla back above the monthly 21, then they're working on the path towards 350. And it's a monthly chart, right? So I'm not. Uh, not a quick process, of course, but over time, back above that 21, better chance that squeeze takes it towards 350. If they keep it below that 21, and now we're getting that 2150 cross, and we gap down on earnings, then we're one step closer to the squeeze firing short. Squeeze fire short, right? not overnight, not over the course of a week. But over the course of time, then they're opening the door for a flush down to 100, maybe even lower. Might be a bit tough to think, yeah, can, can Tesla really go up $200 from here? Or vice versa, can Tesla really go down $100 from here? Again, it's down, it's down 130 bucks inside of the squeeze. You go back to the monthly chart of the S and P's, right? and then back in you know November of last year, it might be a little bit tough to think. Yeah, are they really going to take the S and P's up a thousand dollars? That's how the squeeze operates. It fires at the twenty one EMA. That can take you to about two and a half to three ATR. And now here we are up about. A thousand bucks from that monthly 21. You throw that on the inverse chart, and it fired short. Same outcome, opposite direction. So I'm not long or short Tesla. So no, no biases. Although I do like my muscle cars and my exotic cars, so. I wouldn't call myself an EV kind of guy, but just simply from a squeeze perspective, all said and done, when that monthly squeeze breaks long or short, they take it long, we're somewhere up here, they take it short, we are somewhere down there. So it'll be an interesting earnings for sure. But all right, guys, I'm gonna let you go here. As always, I appreciate you hanging out this afternoon. Mastery, folks. I will see you in about two hours. And uh, and again, folks, just a, a recap of the morning call here. Trading with clarity, it can be a very easy game. Trading without clarity, it's, uh, it's not the funnest thing. You might end up having more fun walking through uh, walking through rush hour traffic. So be patient. Don't be a hero. Don't be the first guy or gal to, to buy it or short it. My two levels here for a swing trade. Back above that 18,400 for a long. Below that daily 50 for a short. In between those two levels, yeah, we can look for a day trade. But frankly, even day trading can be tough with all the uh, the economic sound bites. So thank you again. I appreciate it. I wish you all the best of luck today, and I'll see you again tomorrow morning. Same time, same channel.